Okay, welcome back to Unsolved No More. Just got done with that big Jolene Wick case. Um, took a lot out of me. That was, uh, that was a tough one to get through just because, you know, I seem to have a, a lot invested in that and the twists and turns. But it's time to move on to another case for the channel. And right now, I stumbled across the case that I knew nothing about. And I don't think, I, I guarantee you, 99.9% .9 of you that is watching this have no idea about this either. Now, I did take a look at my demographics the other day on YouTube, and it seems like a lot of my followers are from the area, meaning close to where I live. And that's funny because I, I don't know anybody. Like when I venture from my house, I never see anybody I know. Um, but I digress. The point here is I stumbled across a probable homicide. I'm saying probable now because I haven't investigated this, but it's from 1925. But that's not the kicker. The kicker is that it's five minutes from my house. Now, I live in a very remote area, uh, country, Amish folks. Lots of fields, lots of mountains. Uh, and I have a state park that is five minutes up the road from me. It's not a very big state park, but it's a state park nonetheless. And there was a body found there on July 15th, 1925, according to the Lock Haven Express newspaper. Now, the Lock Haven uh, area is 20 minutes from me. It's where I went to college. Um, in that newspaper article, I stumbled upon because I was actually looking at another old case that happened in Sugar Valley. And how I stumbled upon that case was when I was researching the bootlegger, uh, Prince Farrington who is known about this area, being a big uh, bootlegger in the 20s. And I wanted to do a, uh, a show on him because his, his stills, and he had a gun battle with police, or his men did, uh, not far from here, 20 minutes from here. And I often wanted to take a metal detector to try to find where that shootout occurred. But while reading the book, Prince of Princes or something like that, Guy Graybill, I believe, was the author. He also had mentioned in there about an unsolved murder on this road, which is five minutes up the road from me. And these people stumbling upon it. So that's what I was researching. I was looking for that again online. And there's nothing about it, but when I was looking for that, this murder popped onto my radar through, I believe it was a site called Pennsylvania Rambler, or something to that effect where um, an individual had written a blog about it. A lot of good information there, but I was like, are you, are you for real? This is an, a mystery. A potential unsolved homicide five minutes from where I live. I got, I got to do something with this one, right? So, here I am. But, this is going to be a little different. I thought, how could I change some things up a little bit? And I thought, well, maybe the audience would like to see what I do on a daily basis when it comes to cases. So what I thought was, hey, every time that I do something on this case, I'll document it. 
Hence, today, day one, research this, found this. Day two, maybe go to the site. Day three, interview a relative, whatever it is. And do it that way and you'll get maybe a sense of what I do when I investigate the case. So this is like an ebb and flow of video information, meaning it could change. Like right now, I'm going to give you what I know. Well, when we get to maybe day seven, it might be completely different because you're dealing with a case from 1925. There's going to be a lot of misinformation if you find any, a lot of distorted facts. Remember what I say about time. Time is an undefeated opponent. It gets to everybody. It works on memories. It works through the generations where things get embellished as the generations go along. So these cases are difficult, but they're just as important. And I have a goal, I think, in this case, what I want to accomplish. And we'll get to that. So on July 15, 1925, at Ravensburg State Forest, uh, a body was discovered by some kids. And the coroner and everything was called out. Um, and it looked to the coroner. Again, we're going off of 1925 and some old articles that the body had been there maybe uh, a, a month. You know, even up to six weeks. It was decomposed that bad. But they were be able to give a description, you know, based off of some things. And the investigation starts rolling from there. As you can see, I have a little printout here of the newspaper article. It says, body of woman found near Rocktown. Fully dressed but without shoes or hat. Discovery was made about noon today. So that's what I have to go on. I want to start with a newspaper article that is closest to the event happening. I don't want to, let's say, somebody did an article last week about it. I, I don't want to start there. Maybe I'll end there, but I want to go the closest to the event happening as I can to gather facts. Remember, when you don't have police reports, newspapers are a decent source of information. It's been my experience that the older the case is the better the information is in the newspapers compared to modern day or even up to a decade ago. A lot of false information. But back in 1925s, the 40s, 50s, journalists were more reputable, meaning they had more access to information. That's not the case today. But back then, I, I believe it was. So I tend to believe these old newspaper articles more than I do present. So a couple of things that I found out research, and I found a couple of newspaper articles on a follow-up from this, but not many. But the bottom line is, this was a female that the coroner said was between 20 and 40 years old. Now, that's a broad range for a body that was only decomposing for four weeks. Today, we would have narrowed that down a lot more. So that's what we have to go on. About five foot, 150 pounds. Brown hair gave a description of what she was wearing. Um, with a blue dress and ruffles and uh, sashes. And I have to research all that stuff. I got to reach out to people who are familiar with fashion of that era because what I want to do is I want to create a sketch because guess what this this individual this girl her identity has never been found she's just a Jane Doe she's called the Jane Doe of Ravensburg that bothers me it bothers me 
Don't ask me why. But I have a mystery five minutes from my home from 1925. This girl doesn't have a name. She was buried in Dunstown, which is another 30 minutes from here. And I assume an unmarked grave. And she doesn't have a name. Did I say that already? She doesn't have a name. Remember when I said in the beginning, I have a goal? Well, now you know my goal. It's to find out who this person is. Okay? Find out what happened. The coroner said she, it looked, it appeared that she was murdered because of three holes to the top of her head. I got to look into that further. Okay? Where she, I got to pinpoint exactly where she was found. It's very vague, over a hill. I mean, I know the area, but I can't picture where that would be. It's very, a body dump location, very important to know whether she's thrown out of a car, whether she was killed at a lover's lane and then placed there. You got, I got to find that location. Right? So I'm not sure... I have a feeling that this is going to get involved. Now, I know I'm going to run into a dead end at some point in time. I've worked many missing persons cases, and it's a shame that some of them never get names. And people never report them missing. They're like thrown away, discarded. This is going to be a difficult case. But I'm going to make it my goal to try to find out who this person is. If that includes an exhumation to exhume the body, to take DNA and then trace that through genealogy, I think that's what should be done. Now, you'll always have people who were... You know, why would you waste your time with that? Work on more current cases. Um, you always have those type of people. But when you're passionate about something and you dig your heels in and you get to work, um, I, I don't think it matters as long as somebody is caring about these victims. She doesn't have a name. That bothers me. Somebody gave birth to this woman. She was somebody. Somebody loved her. And then she's killed. Her body's discarded. And now nobody knows her. She's forgotten. I always say that, you know, me, you, we're two generations removed from being forgotten. And that's the truth. Okay? Okay. Yeah, your grandkids, I mean, your kids certainly, and your grandkids will come and visit you as your grave, your tombstone, whatever it is. But how about your grandkids' kids? Think about you. You may have went to your grandfather, your grandmother's grave, right? Certainly your mom and dad's. But how about your great-grandfather? No. No, nobody really does that. You're forgotten as generations go on. And this girl has been forgotten. And it's it's five minutes from me. I got to do something. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I feel. So, I, what I'll do, I think, is every day that I do something on the case, I'm going to release it. I'm going to do a video. So there might be, you know, seven parts, might be 70 parts to this. I don't know. But I think it's important. You know, I don't want to be one of those persons that are out there, you know, with a selfie stick. Gosh, I hope not. That ugh, just gave me chills thinking about that. But I, I might have to do that. Unless I can get somebody to follow me around to film me for free.
because there's a lot of moving parts in this. I'm going to have to go to the coroner's office. Probably have to go to, I mean, this is state police territory. They probably ain't going to help me out. I'm going to do a lot of research on uh, Ancestry.com, more newspaper research. I got to go find witnesses. Now you're saying, where are you going to find witnesses? 1925 case. Well, there's some old timers I guarantee you know about this case. Okay? And I got to go find them. I got to locate them. I got to get off my ass and go knock on doors like I did when I was on the job. For those that haven't watched uh, Bosch on Amazon, I recommend Harry Bosch. And he has a sign that says that. Get off your ass and go knock on doors. I like that. But I might have to go do that again. I might have to get some help on this case. I'm not adverse to that. If somebody's out there and they want to help on a local case, get a hold of me. Go to my website, KenMains.com. Fill out the little contact information thing, whatever it is there. I mean, maybe you can help me with this case. This is important. You know, I believe God has a plan for everybody. Now, <clears throat> I don't get into <coughs> politics or religion. As you know, I have my beliefs on both. And I, But that is something that I feel strongly in. And right now, I feel strongly about working this case and finding out who this girl was. That's important to me. To put a name. So if we can raise her up out of her grave, take some DNA from a molar, and then enter that in a... We need to do that. Right? Right? I'll pay for it because I know somebody's question is, well, who's going to pay for it? You want the taxpayers? Uh, that would be the first question if I go to the police department that they're going to ask me. Well, who's going to pay for it? I'll pay for it because that's how important it is to me. Okay? We have to find out and give this girl a name and give her a proper burial. Maybe none of her relatives care because none of them probably know her. Right? But it doesn't matter. If we can get her a good tombstone, maybe do like a, uh, what is a GoFundMe for a tombstone. So it isn't saying Ravensburg Jane Doe. It gives her a real name and barrier. You know? Too much, too much in life we look out for ourselves. You know? It, it, you have to do good. Okay? That's how I feel. You have to do good. And this is doing good for something. It allows me to investigate a mystery that I want to solve. It allows you to come along with, that, to, with me on that journey. And we can figure it out together. It gives her her identity back. Right? It's, it's surely not the police didn't try. From the newspaper articles I read, they, they tried. But it was 1925. Okay? It's 100 years ago. Right? <laughs> Pretty close. So much advance in technology. Let's figure this out. If she was shot, did they have metal detectors in 1925? Sure they did, but did the police department have one? If she was shot three times, hey, if I can pinpoint this scene, let's go back to that location. Let's run a metal detector and see if we can find any shell casings. I mean, yeah. What's the likelihood? Hey. Let me tell you something. I was with Cold West Agency with Steve Cedarwall. And he showed me that they did a metal detecting area where 
John Tunstall was killed, Billy the Kid's employer, that started Billy the Kid on the rampage. And they found the cartridge from that area. That was over 100 years. So it can be done if we have a location. And then what? Well, I don't know. But as a detective, all you want is to have another lead. And what that means is if I find a cartridge, Okay, well, what, what brand ammunition is it? Where was that sold? Maybe it was sold only in one location. Okay, um, y yes, could, could we potentially get some groove marks, some rifling from the barrel? Yeah, it's possible. Anything's possible. But one thing I know is if you don't try, you're not going to succeed on anything. I'd rather try and fail than to not try at all so this is going to be episode one of i guess right now we'll call it ravensburg jane doe discovered july 15th 1925 a couple of things that stand out to me let me get these out right now just from reading the article it stated that they thought maybe that she was killed elsewhere and moved to that location. Um, possible. But I also read in there that she was partially covered with leaves and brush. That ain't somebody getting thrown from a moving vehicle. Okay? If you're getting thrown from a moving vehicle down over an embankment, you're not going to be covered Somebody, if it's down over an embankment, somebody went down over that embankment and covered her with those items. Okay, that just doesn't happen naturally. So we can start deducing. Okay, she wasn't thrown from a vehicle. But I'll get a, a more of a sense for this once I pinpoint where that location is. Right? Um, her having no shoes on. That, that's a red flag to me. No hat. You know, I researched a little bit of 1920s era, and it seemed like they would females would wear hats. I got to know more about that, whether that's fact or if that's fiction. No purse being found. Did they carry purses in 1920? See, there's a lot of moving parts in here that I have to investigate before, you know, I can make any assessments. But I want to give you guys a look into my brain, if you will, as to what I'm thinking already. Day one on this case. What am I thinking? Okay. Um, no shoes on. What type of shoes did they wear back then? Was it high heels? Was it loafers? Was it boots? Why are our shoes missing? Immediately that starts to me to believe, yes, she probably was killed somewhere else in a house where she had her shoes off and then was dumped at this location. That could change the more I get into this, but initially, that's what I see. It's okay. Investigators sometimes get hung up on, uh, I don't know, I don't wanna call it ego, but not moving off of a theory or a thought. You know, remember what I'm saying about her being partially covered up, so, Hey, she was killed right there and was buried. Well, that's not necessarily true. It's okay to have a working theory, and that theory can evolve. It can adjust. It's fluid, just like a crime is. Everything's fluid. You can move it. Right now, I'm thinking a certain way. Yeah. But when I get to that crime scene or body dump location, I might look around and be like, ooh, that doesn't make sense to me. And I can change it up. You see what I'm saying? So, I, I have to pinpoint this location. I got two and a quarter miles from Rocktown, a quarter mile from Big Rock State Forest Camp. Well, I got to find out what Big Rock State Forest Camp is. I imagine that that is what Ravensburg State Park was called at the time, but I have to research that now because a quarter mile 
That's a big distance, but it's better than two and a quarter miles. So what I'm saying is if I can get within a quarter mile of where that location is, and it says it was over a bank, well, then I can narrow it down where the body dump or crime scene location is and begin my investigation there. I uh, have to go to Dunstown Cemetery and try to find this unmarked grave. Some daunting tasks, but if you're up for it, I'm up for it, and let's do it together. This will be uh, different. This is still a deep dive, very much so. It's just going to be broken up into when I work on the case, I will sit down here or be out on scene somehow, some way, and I'll, and I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'll post stuff on Facebook. Um, yeah, that's the way we're going to do it. So, this is episode one, day one. My research into Ravensburg, Jane Doe. Hopefully by the end of this, man, I hope we have a name for her. Okay? So until next time, thanks for watching. Mains out. Yeah, let's talk about.